We can say with confidence that a secret space program definitely exists. We have a great amount of video evidence and astronaut testimony. Just because the government refuses to acknowledge this doesn't make it go away. This lie has been going on since at least the Second World War. We're talking 80 years now. Governments need to maintain credibility. So once you start lying, you've got to keep that lie going. You have to keep doubling down. The largest portion of secret space activity is corporate not government. We live in a world in which we usually only learn the truth about something when it becomes irrelevant. But we might want to ask, how safe is some of this technology? Do I want it shared willy-nilly if it allows someone to blow up half of a continent or an ocean? Because what if that is the case? We can say with confidence that a secret space program definitely exists. Now, of course, to a large extent, the U.S. government and military acknowledge this. I mean, on one level, the United States cannot hope to dominate military engagements without having a strong presence in space. All, all the smart bombs and GPS won't work without that. From a purely geostrategic point of view, space is a critical theater of operation, and it must be protected from adversaries, which means the use of encrypted advanced communications, new technologies whenever possible, and so on. Now, of course, we have to recognize that there is a wholly unexplained phenomenon, both on Earth, in Earth's atmosphere, and in space as well. We have a great amount of video evidence and astronaut testimony of incredible anomalies in space. Just because the government refuses to acknowledge this doesn't make it go away. Something extraordinary is up there in Earth orbit and beyond. Some people argue those maneuvering objects are man-made. Others say that they're extraterrestrial. But either way, it's a strong case for a secret space program. Because I mean, if it's ET even, clearly the military and the black budget world would need to monitor and deal with that as much as they can. That by itself would require a secret space program. They can't exactly tell the public that there is another highly advanced intelligence operating in our world and in orbit, so they have to respond in secret. Now, there are two real questions that people in the UFO and related uh, fields want to know when it comes to a secret space program. Does such a program have a relationship in some way to UFOs or UAP or even extraterrestrials? I think the answer to that is a resounding yes. And the other question is how advanced is the science and technology behind such a program? I don't think we have a definite answer, but I do think based on a reasonable filling in of the blanks of certain things that we do know and are confident about, that certain breakthroughs have almost certainly been made and are being used in a secret space program. The question really is how far are those breakthroughs? And I don't, I've never seen anyone who is confidently, at least in my opinion, able to answer those questions, not definitively. We will discuss the advanced top secret technological developments at the first Silicon Valley Conference on Secret Space Technologies Business Applications. Experiences and witnesses of advanced technology will present how they have interacted with innovations and discoveries far beyond our current reality, but that may one day become our reality. In this conference, we will discuss the futuristic civilian applications of these technologies to our economy. It is about time that we start challenging our current beliefs and limitations and start to envision a more advanced civilization for us and our children. One day, we may be using some of these secret space technologies to build viable civilian business applications. Well, the first thing we have to realize is that when we speak of the government, we have to redefine what we mean. We're not talking about the kind of bureaucracy of a genuinely functioning system. You know, one in which you have the president at the top of the government who then oversees everything and all the players answer to him. We haven't had that for a long time and certainly not now. Within the formal structure of the United States government, there is now the unified U.S. Space Force, which supposedly is has in it folded in the U.S. Space Command, the programs of the Navy and the Air Force. And there's always been a very deep and known involvement 
of um, organizations like the National Reconnaissance Office, that's the NRO. But we have to remember that the U.S. government is permeated with a large number of special access programs that are beyond any genuine inquiry. Programs like this are buried within the Pentagon, they're buried within the Department of Energy, and also the CIA, perhaps elsewhere. And the real thing to remember in this context is the preponderance of private corporate players in the secret space program. This is something that has to be recognized. I had a long interview with one former high level CIA officer and scientist uh, who had a, has a great deal of knowledge on this matter. He made it clear to me that first of all, in the classified world, your security clearances typically get better and more numerous when you leave government service for private industry or at least that is when you go to work on these types of programs. And he said something else that stayed with me, that the largest portion of secret space activity is corporate, not government. And he would not tell me just how advanced the corporate programs and tech uh, technology was. He was very careful not to go down that road, but he didn't make that very clear to me. Now this supports what insiders and researchers have been saying for more than 20 years which is at a huge portion of secrecy on UFOs in general and the secret space program as well, that a large amount of that information is proprietary, not classified. Or to put it a different way, you have uh, the authority of the government and the classified world protecting the interests of private entities that are exploring this matter. They're studying it. They're doing research and development on it. They're making money from it. And during that whole process, being totally insulated from public scrutiny by the, the laws and arm of the US government. There are a couple of reasons for the secrecy on this subject. I mean, first of all, when we talk about uh, secrecy of a covert space program, we're really talking about the part of that space program that deals with aliens or UFOs, because we recognize that there is going to be secrecy, you might even say legitimate secrecy in a conventional geostrategic element of a space program. But we're talking about the exotic uh, elements of it here. And you cannot separate out the reasons for secrecy of a, of a space program like that from secrecy about UFOs in general, because they're both very closely related. Now, first, we just have to say the narrative must be maintained. In other words, this lie has been going on since at least the Second World War. We're talking 80 years now. There might have been a chance early on for the government to come clean on UFOs, but they've, they have lied so long, they have to keep lying. And it's not an easy thing to switch out your answer when you have adamantly maintained something different for so long, when you've gaslit the public for so long, when you've developed a huge secrecy bureaucracy for so long. I mean, people are going to have questions. They're going to be angry. There's a loss of credibility that every government has to avoid. Governments need to maintain credibility. So once you start lying, you've got to keep that lie going. You have to keep doubling down again and again. But step back from that and look at some other elements of the situation. There's a good reason to believe that the government, if we can call them the government for, for now, that they don't really know how to handle this situation. In other words, this situation of other, what seem to be other intelligences that are here interacting with this world of ours and with the human race. I, I don't think, I think they feel outmatched by what they are dealing with or it's also possible, frankly, and this is very seldom discussed, that they've been compromised in some way or another. After all, there have been rumors for years of out-and-out -out collaboration in one form or another with aliens. I know that sounds outrageous to some people, but there have been quite a few of these claims that have been made from individuals with very professional backgrounds. The question is, is this claim true? Now, of course, we don't know, but there are quite a few of these accounts. So if it's if it is true, that's not an easy thing to broach. Again, especially after such a long time of operation in that mode. And also secrecy usually happens because it enhances someone's power and often their wealth. It is likely that much of the advanced science and technology 
used in the secret space program is classified, which means that the general public not only it's not likely to learn about these things, but it's probably illegal for them to try. This is one reason I'm sure that for the current attempts to create a kind of global wide legal system regarding things like intellectual property protection. You certainly don't want some genius savant in uh, India or Croatia or the Central African Republic discovering a breakthrough that already is being exploited in the classified world. When you get right down to it, this secret has to be maintained because revealing it is just too explosive, whether it's just UFOs in general or a secret space program in particular. We will discuss above top secret technological developments at the first Silicon Valley Conference on Secret Space Technology Business Applications. Experiencies and witnesses of advanced technologies will present how they have interacted with innovations and discoveries far beyond our current reality, but one day possibly becoming our reality. In this conference, we will discuss the futuristic civilian applications of these technologies to our economy. It is about time that we start challenging our current beliefs and limitations and start to envision a more advanced civilization for us and our children. One day, we may be using some of these secret space technologies to build viable civilian business applications. I've gone back and forth on this question for years. We like to say no. We like to say that at some point, the truth is going to come out. And I guess you could say technically that's true or probably true. But the thing is, we live in a world in which we usually or often only learn the truth about something when it becomes irrelevant. Or, you know, we might more or less know the truth, but the official established players of the society will deny, deny, deny. So you can ask, well, what good is the truth? Whether it's about JFK or false flags or UFOs or a secret space program. Researchers may well have figured things out quite, quite explicitly, but without an official recognition from the government, which is closely connected to the legacy media, to big tech, to the intelligence communities, to the financial world. As long as the government can deny that and, and maintain their allies, well, they can still maintain the fictions that they need in order to run the world at, you know, the way that they see fit. So, you know, how long can the lies about UFOs and a secret space program really continue? Well, I would say certainly longer than the lifetime of anyone living today. I mean, after all, they've been going this long. They could probably keep going. The thing is, we, we had the internet once, but that internet doesn't really exist anymore. I think we now understand this. We have a system of digital surveillance and propaganda that is managed and operated by a very small group of powerful players. And it is getting worse, not better. So it is possible that the window may well be closing for opportunities we have for breaking through this wall of secrecy. The key to financing something this big, something that at least seems this big, I suppose we could say, is that you have to go outside ordinary channels of appropriations. How do you do that? Well, unfortunately, you do it by siphoning as much money out of the special access programs as you can. Yes, and, and there's probably there's probably billions of dollars right there. But you probably also engage in levels of financial fraud and money laundering that probably has to be considered criminal. Now, first of all, we know this happens in our world all the time. It's hardly ever investigated or reported, but we know it's true. We know financial fraud is widespread in the global uh, financial system, in the world's most powerful intelligence agencies as well, uh, some of which that money has certainly come through the illegal but incredibly lucrative drug trafficking trade. After all, just because that money is illegal, there's just too much of it. Everyone wants it. We know that the CIA, for one example, has a long history of laundering funds that way. Search out BCCI or Iran-Contra or Gary Webb. That just gets you started. I firmly believe these organizations have the world's best accountants. They certainly can afford them. So acquiring and hiding their money is one of the most important things that they do. Over the years, there have been reports of, of so-called missing money from the Pentagon and uh, the United States government in general. Most recently, just a couple of years ago, Dr. Mark Skidmore of Michigan State University 
along with former government official Catherine Austin Fitz, researched over 21 trillion dollars in unaccounted transactions on the books of the Department of Defense and also of Housing and Urban Development. I know for a fact they've stated uh, publicly and privately that they think that number is is low because once they got to 21 trillion dollars their team was locked out of any further ability to investigate this matter, probably quite a bit more. I've heard uh, Dr. Skidmore estimate the number could be as much as $50 trillion. We're talking over the last 20 years or so. It's an astonishing amount. Now, that does not mean that amount of money is missing per se. It does mean, however, that there are huge numbers of transactions, many of which are duplicated, triplicated, who knows how many times, which cannot be properly seen or examined, much less audited. And that absolutely gives more than ample opportunity for huge amounts of cash to go right out of the window of our world economy into secret infrastructure, which might be anywhere including in space, because there just seems to be no proper oversight. I think the answer to that is basically no. Uh, there are a few members who are on special committees that probably have a bit more information than their colleagues, yes. But keep in mind that they are bound by intense secrecy protocols and laws as well. And it's not clear how much they really know anyway. Uh, some uh, members of the Senate and Congress were briefed a couple of years ago by Dr. Eric Davis, a very knowledgeable person in all of this. And he undoubtedly rocked their worlds by discussing the reality of acquired UFO tech. That is what it appears he talked about. But the real information they probably don't have, I'm talking members of Congress here, are the details. They probably don't have the details. So we're talking program names, uh, code words, locations, programs, the extent of our own technological development. It's unlikely uh, that maybe more than the tiniest handful might have an inkling of that. There's no indication that I have seen anywhere that points to substantial knowledge by members of Congress on pretty much any of this, much less information on who or what is behind the UFO phenomenon in general? Like, are there aliens behind this? If not, I don't think that they are uh, likely read into it. If so, you're talking one or two exceptions. And I don't think that Congress is even capable, frankly, of handling this subject. And I doubt that the people running the secret trust Congress either. It's a shame because if you believe in the American dream, then those members of Congress are supposed to represent the American people. That's how the system is supposed to work. It's what UFO activists in the 1950s and 60s really did believe and really did try to make happen. They tried to get congressional hearings on this, but that was a different era. We will discuss the advanced top secret technological developments at the first Silicon Valley Conference on Secret Space Technologies Business Applications. Experiences and witnesses of advanced technology will present how they have interacted with innovations and discoveries far beyond our current reality, but that may one day become our reality. In this conference, we will discuss the futuristic civilian applications of these technologies to our economy. It is about time that we start challenging our current beliefs and limitations and start to envision a more advanced civilization for us and our children. One day, we may be using some of these secret space technologies to build viable civilian business applications. Well, I would say we need to start with something more modest. We, the people, need to be able to learn the truth accurately and fully. And the first thing we need is to stop being gaslit and lied to. We need to get confirmation on the existence of genuine UFOs, that is, non-human intelligences, and, I mean, all the aspects of the concealment of this reality. Otherwise, we're living in a world of total fiction and illusion, and I don't think any of us wants that. Now, whether that can even happen, whether we can get a genuine, honest confirmation, that's a good question, and it's not the easiest one to answer. We're talking about a structure of secrecy that is like a labyrinth. But I, I do think it is possible that we can get good answers and maybe even truthful answers. Now, if it does happen, we're likely going to be seeing a seismic 
sea change in our world, our politics, our society, uh, even beyond the things that we're seeing today. And I think, you know, such a change is going to be resisted with every bit of strength that those individuals in possession of the secret have. You can ask, well, does the public deserve the technology that it paid for? Well, you, you know, the answer is yes, of course it does. But we might want to ask, how safe is some of this technology? How safe is some of this science? Do, we, do you want it? Do I want it shared willy-nilly if it allows someone to blow up half of a continent or an ocean? Because what if that is the case? It's not hard imagining. You might trust yourself with that knowledge or power, but maybe your neighbors don't trust you very much, or maybe you shouldn't trust yourself anyway. And plus, do you trust everyone in your neighborhood, much less the rest of the world? Now, the sad reality of this is probably that some of the more revolutionary technologies won't be released until there is some kind of genuine global digital uh, dictatorship fully in place to perfectly monitor the public 24-7. A lot of people have argued that capability is close to being achieved already. I do suspect that once the human race has successfully been turned into some giant anthill with no more wiggle room for, for true freedom, that we might then see some of this tech related to a secret space program coming out. Because it, you know, the idea is that it's got to be controlled. The most important point for the very few people at the top of our human food chain is that the narrative must be maintained and that their position at the top must not be threatened. It's all about power. And the fact is that if you control global finance, you control legacy media, big tech, the intelligence communities, you've got pretty much everything you need. Overcoming that won't be easy. There are undoubtedly positive, beneficial technologies energy generation come to mind, maybe um, in the form of even transportation or who knows a whole host of other elements, uh, biological sciences, we really may never know, or beneficial things in other aspects of tech that people might want to have access to. It's entirely possible. And that could be very helpful for us and could make the world in a better and easier place to live in. It's totally possible. Uh, what we need is information, and we've got to be able to trust the information that comes to us. And again, that's going to be a, a tricky, tricky problem for us uh, on the outside trying to get this information. Now, as a final word about the event, I'm intrigued and interested by the upcoming conference. This is the first Silicon Valley conference on the secret space program and its technology business applications. If, if anyone is wondering about the possibilities and challenges inherent in developing new tech derived from a secret space program, then I would say you, you do very well to enroll and participate in this event. Uh, these types of events, uh, by the way, usually have a way of surprising us. And I, I would be shocked, frankly, if there were not a number of gold nuggets of information or insight that come out of this. We're talking serious out of the box thinking here, but let's get real. Who really at this point doubts that there is a sophisticated and secret presence of highly advanced technology 500 miles above our head? We will discuss above top secret technological developments at the first Silicon Valley Conference on Secret Space Technology Business Applications. Experiencies and witnesses of advanced technologies will present how they have interacted with innovations and discoveries far beyond our current reality, but one day possibly becoming our reality. In this conference, we will discuss the futuristic civilian applications of these technologies to our economy. It is about time that we start challenging our current beliefs and limitations and start to envision a more advanced civilization for us and our children. One day, we may be using some of these secret space technologies to build viable civilian business applications.